This is a vintage True Tone 12 inch portable black and white television. A little opening note, this is a vintage television resurrection video. It's not a restoration or repair, it's just simply do the minimum to bring it back to life. And this came from a pretty dirty environment. It has a mouse nest in it. It has mouse droppings and urine in it. And some people might find that offensive that the set is not fully cleaned before it's worked on. Uh, that's okay. You can check out. And next week, 7 o'clock a.m. Monday morning, uh, Los Angeles time, we'll have another video for you. I'm not sure what era it's from. Uh, we're going to resurrect this set. This came from a friend of mine's mining uh, operation. Uh, an abandoned part of the operation that was probably left unused in the 70s. And I just thought of this because I talked to him on the phone the other day and just wanted to see how he was doing and he, he said did you ever get any of those old TVs going and I said oh if only you knew and he just kind of laughed at me um, so yeah let's pop the back off I believe this had a rat's nest in it there's this was in a previous video where we went over all the TVs I brought back from this location so let's pop the back off and see if we can identify it and find a schematic for it. Unfortunately, the model tag is long gone. So the knobs are on the side here. And it doesn't really say anything except True Tone, which was the house brand of Western Auto Department stores, I guess. That's what the WA is about. Uh, Western Auto was never out here that I can remember, so. And of course this is where the model tag was and it's not legible anymore. So, this is pretty much how I remember it. And this looks Japanese built. In fact, I was looking through just random Sam's and I noticed some Hitachi sets that looked like this. Well, not with the rat's nest, but... Anyway... T91201, I wonder if that's anything. No, I believe when we plug this TV in before it just did absolutely nothing Ugh. man I guess these stupid silverfish I guess they like eating the damn rat's nest There's really nothing here I believe that's where the tube layout chart was right there that's gone. See that little hole right there? That's where the mice were entering and exiting. It's all it takes. Mouse can get through the hole, a hole the size of a pencil. You know, I would really like to get this working without removing that rat's nest. I think the aromatherapy of the tubes heating that up and burning it would just be out of this world. Oh man, there's another one of them damn paper bugs. Boy, this thing is full of those um, silverfish. I don't like them because they eat schematics. Uh, paper bugs, they, they'll eat They'll turn an ent entire uh, Sam's folder into dust. Uh, you know, I've seen admirals that look a lot like this too, but I see a lot of green, like maybe the mouse piss ate the uh, circuit board up. Oh yeah, Japan.
God, this thing is just filled with bugs. You know what? I'm gonna put this, see if I got any of them plastic bags that you use, you put your food in when you tent the house. I'm gonna put this whole thing in one of those plastic bags and then fill it with CO2 or propane. So I spotted a model number tag right here, 2DC. I need like a little mirror to see it. 2DC something. 2DC 3812. Am I reading that right? 2DC 3812. Two DC three eight one two nine seven four dash two. Boy, that's uh, pretty late. It's a lot later than I thought. Well, that's not it. That's not it. Two DC three eight one two. I must not be reading that right. Maybe it's three nine one two. Okay, maybe it's two DC three nine. One, two, it's that three and then that le that digit next to the three. Three, nine, one, it's, I don't know, two DC three and then two at the end is easy to make up at three, three, nine, one, two. Three, nine, one, two, B, C, so there's two revisions of it. Let's try 1050-3. All right, well that's not it. It's just starting to get frustrating. Okay, big magnifying class. 2DC3... That's definitely a one and a two. So is that a six, eight, or a zero? Well, we've done six and eight. All it could be is three, zero, one, two. Three, zero, one, two. Similar to chassis 1164-1. All right, so 1164 is 1971, and it's a Midland. Well, who makes Midland? All right, we're, here's the Midland and 38 HE7 and then we have a 4 EH7 right there. So that looks like a 38 HE7 to me, but over here we have a 10, 10 J, Y, 8. We have a 10 J, Y, 8 right there and there's three tubes running down that direction towards the front. This is not anywhere close to this at all. All right, there's one last hope that's 3612. And I'm sure everybody's been screaming at their screen that that's what this is. 3612 is 799-4. All right, this is it. It's not, if it's not here, then I don't have it. And holy crap, is that it? Yes, it is. And this is more along what I thought, 1966. Yeah, this is it. And there's our 10JY8. So, yeah, I just like to have the schematic uh, for the educational purpose of the video. Yeah, I could just clean the thing out and test all the tubes and probably get it working, but I like to make these videos in more of an educational format. Learn how to diagnose, diagnostic thinking, diagnostic technique. So I know that might frustrate some people, but that's kind of become my method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to Kinko's and photocopy it because I'm trying to keep a mint condition complete SAMS. Uh, set 
and so I don't like to destroy these. I like to photocopy them where I can draw on them and stuff while making the video. Just to verify, uh, just measuring the resistance across the power and there's nothing there and power switch isn't doing anything. And could be a bad power switch. Uh, this is the fuse right here. Uh, the fuse is good. So, yeah, this thing just didn't power up or do anything when we tested it in the first video. It's just totally stone dead. So, I'm just verifying that, that it's not the cord. So, yeah, it could be, this is a series string set, so it could be a, a, a tube or a bad solder joint or more likely the mouse ate through one of the wires so we'll probably get in here and find that it's something very simple I think what I might do with this is I might bake this thing in a hot car put it back together put it in a black trash bag and then just bake it in a hot car that'll kill everything including all the eggs and everything. It's been a year since I recorded the intro and this has been in this trash bag filled with carbon dioxide that entire time and I'm just getting back to uh, resurrecting this set and a resurrection is just to do the minimum to bring it back to life to make it play again and I got the schematics photocopied so let's dig into it and see if what we can do to get it to work. Okay, so the goal of this project is trying to make it work without removing the mouse nest. Remove and replace all rat nest infested attic insulation. Isn't that a cool objective? Guarantee you that's never ever ever happened in the history of television repair. And I'm looking at this area down here and I actually saw this while I was editing the intro down and I'm wondering if the mouse urine has just completely removed the traces off the board because um, if that's the case this thing could be toast there's a lot of areas here with green copper in fact the whole thing almost is and I can't tell if that's like mouse piss damage or I can't really tell what's going on here even with a magnifying glass so I'll ohm it out let's start on this remember the symptom is completely dead so we have a hot chassis set so one of the pins comes in and goes straight to ground which that pin there comes in straight to the chassis that's correct now we'll go to the other pin and this other pin should go through a coil to the power switch to a fuse I think we checked the fuse in the previous video and it should go to pin 1 of V8 as well as a 3 watt resistor but we're not 3 ohm resistor I'm sorry but we're not worried about this because the filaments aren't even lighting. So what we need to do is we need to chase this right here. So let's see if we're getting to pin one of the V8, which is the 33GY7. So, which one of these, they're all frozen now, what? What happened here on volume? So of course this is the 33GY7. So pin 8. So damn dirty I can't even see but this is marked H. I guess these two are marked H for heater.
nothing. So is the power switch bad? Can I even get to the power switch? Is the power switch making the jet airplanes unhappy? How do you even get to this? Oh, there we go. Damn. That thing is frozen. Okay, let's try it again here. Now we got it. So do we have anything here now? Doesn't look like it all. Go to ohms. No, we have no ohms. It's open. That's touching them together. Interesting. So we have filament from here to here. And now what you have to do is you just have to start chasing which is going to be very difficult. You need to just start chasing through here until you find the open. So where's the end of the chain? What is V10? UHF tuner has a tube in it? It sure does. Ooh, look at that. There's our blue filament wire. There's our mouse damage. Boy, look at that. Look at how they shredded that wire. What's even cooler is when they do this to a uh, the wiring harness of an expensive car. So we have a wire that goes from there to there that's been severed by the mouse. Actually, you know what we can do? Yep. That's it. Because it's going from there to there and it's not coming to here. So, yeah. With a clip lead bridging that wire. Now we have continuity. So now at least we'll have filaments to heat up this lovely delicacy right here. Okay, here we go. Watt meter is in place. Aromatherapy, what do they call that, a Glade plug-in? Let's uh, plug in the mouse nest plug-in here. Ooh, I hear the vertical running. Hear that? Seems dark. Is our wattage low? Pony Master Charge.
working this frozen volume control. I hear a little staticky there. You know, did I ever test the CRT in this? Okay, contrast brightness. Got these frozen pots. All right. I'm curious if there's high voltage, and I'm should be able to. This thing should be getting pretty hot. Um, what is this? The horizontal frequency? Ooh, hmm. Starting to cook. Just got a hit there. Nothing. Eighty watts, that might be a little bit low. Okay, let's take a peek in here. These one X two tubes, they like to clinko strinculate. No, nothing. Nobody home. No Arky Doodle. voltage at all. A B plus comes in through here, through the damper, up to pin three, which I guess that would be that right there. Um, of course do not measure because it's got a massive pulse on it when it's working and when it's working is the key here. Mmm, boy, that's really cooking. That's really a, it's really an interesting thing going on there. Um, then, then it comes out over here to the plate. So, what we probably want to do is get a sacrificial meter. Get a meter we can destroy, and we want to measure four, three, and four. At least they're easily accessible. That's kind of nice. Okay, so sacrificial meter. I don't think that the high voltage pulses are going to affect this thing. It's too damn old. Um, let's see. I'm on the 500 volt. At least I think I'm doing this right. Is this the common right here? Uh, is that the thousand volt? Anyway, so I want to measure coming out of here. I want to measure three and four. So three. Oh boy. So if that's uh, 500 volts, we got uh, what 25, 30 volts there and four. Same thing, so at least the flyback's not open. 
Okay, all right, well I put it down on the 100 volt scale and I'm getting about 38 volts there, so... So why, why do we not have... I guess we gotta start by checking pin two. Okay, well this is pin two right here. And I have zero. I have nothing there. And this looks corroded here, so where does this... Oh, we have it there. So this trace is broken. This... Here. Here. Boy, is that hard to get through. So we have power here, and I don't know what this is. But this is not getting through here. So we I need to bridge that. I need to make new connecty doodle. That's pretty horrible, but look at what we're working with. Alright, here we go. Assuming that there might be power coming through the damper now. Hmm, doesn't seem like the power's come up any, does it? The wattage draw. You know, 10 or 15 watts might be all the horizontal is. Okay, well we got power there now because uh, that's on the back on the 500 volt scale, so we're up at uh, 150 volts. So do we have a raster? No, we don't. Do we have any high voltage? No. Ooh. Uh, not, not enough to... Not enough to write home about. Nope. Nope, no high voltage. Here's what we got to do. We got to go through and measure every voltage on the bottom of this horizontal output damper because it's possible that there's the ground is missing or maybe the screen is missing or maybe the bias is, uh, the grid is missing, but it's not, eh, it's getting pretty warm now, but the, the current draw still low okay we want to look at we know there's voltage on 5 now we want to look at 11 and 9 10 and 8 maybe the ground is missing but we'll start with 11 okay let's start with 9 10 it's supposed to be negative 20 okay here's 9 10 and it is negative a little bit we're on a 500 volt scale, so that's okay. That tells us the oscillator is running. Okay, let's try 11. And that's interesting. They have that marked G1, here's G2, and this should be 125 volts. And it's nothing. So let's follow that. That comes down to here. We got nothing there, zero. Comes through this resistor. We got zero. Comes through this resistor. We got zero. Now it looks like it... Ooh, we got 140 there. We got zero there, so we got another open here. Another open. 
more mouse piss erosion. Okay, here we go again. I got that one bypassed. Ooh, that looks a little bit hotter, doesn't it? Now we're up there. That might be a little bit too high. Let's see what happens here. I don't want to burn that tube up. That's that's actually a lot of power for that little tube. What did it go from 70 up to 110? Yeah, we still don't have high voltage, but we have a hell of a lot more wattage draw. Okay, um, we want to check that negative voltage. Yeah, this is a crappy video. It said negative 20. We're at negative 16. Uh, let me see if I turn our horizontal hold, what that does. Negative 15, let me go the other way. Negative 15. Yeah, if I'm if I'm seriously driving 30 or 40 watts through that little tube, it'll red plate and burn up real quick. Next thing we want to do is we want to take a look at this, and it says 100 volts there. We want to take a look at that with our little scope. I don't know how how this is going to show up here. Wow, a hundred volts, but look at the frequency is only seven kilohertz. Yeah, and that's on uh, 20 microseconds, so we should have twice the number of pulses there, so it's running real slow. And adjusting the horizontal hold is not doing anything. Interesting. So yeah, if the oscillator is running real slow, it'll be outside of the effective range of the tuned circuit, meaning the uh, yoke and the flyback. And yeah, it's not going to produce any high voltage at 7 kilohertz. So the question is, what's going on here? That's causing it to run so slow. I'm sure it's another eroded way trace, but where? It's, it's running real slow. It should be up at uh, 7875. That's not it. It should be up at 15 kilohertz. I checked all these voltages and they're all pretty close except rotating the horizontal hold does not affect this voltage at all. So what's going on here? Do we have an open pod or an open trace or is it not supposed to affect the voltage? I would think it would a little bit. It doesn't affect it at all. Okay, what is... Crustastic. It's getting a little bit dark. To get back to this in the morning, get a toothbrush out here and clean this thing up. Yeah, this is pretty incredible. I mean, it is just matted.
And is this shorting between two things here? What's going on here? Is that shorting? What's, what's up with this? I have the ohm meter hooked between here and here. And you can see there's a resistor in parallel with the horizontal control. And it's basically, it's a, a 39 and a 45. So it should never be any higher than whatever that would calculate out to be. I don't know, 39 and 45 would be maybe 18K and it's measuring 49K which is higher than the 39 and when I turn the horizontal hold control pot it makes no difference none whatsoever so the horizontal hold control pot is bad and that resistor's got to be high which that probably really wouldn't matter with the horizontal hold control working so we need to come up with like a 50k pot and it does look like the mouse urine took a toll on these pots god I hope they're not all open I bypassed our ooh look at that seven 14.5 kilohertz. I bypassed, I just bypassed the horizontal hold control, which is open. And yeah, we're up there now. Uh, let's see if we got high voltage. By the way, this is not the way to test this on a TV you like. Nope. It should jump about a quarter to a half an inch, like a centimeter. It should arc a centimeter. And actually, if you look at this, the frequency's right, but the waveform is garbage. This should not have this rounded. It should just come down and then it should go straight up. Um, this is a very, fairly common signal you want to look at on a TV so you should know what it looks like and this is not what it should look like. It should look like that. Well this is turning out to be a difficult one with the mouse damage. I wonder if it worked when they parked it off to the side. You know that's always the the question with these resurrections. Do they uh, did they work when they were dumped or were they dumped because they didn't work so that's kind of the mystery and I'm, I'm fairly sure that we're gonna find more issues due to the mouse um, you know but we'll have to get back into this tomorrow I'm gonna have to really pack this up because this will attract every stray cat in the city and I'll come here tomorrow and it'll be torn apart and so yeah, I gotta lock this down real good. Just to prove that 33GY7 is good, I popped it in this GE that's on the bench in the house. And the cathode current is uh, right around 100. And yeah, it's a original True Tone tube. This is what a good horizontal waveform looks like. 15.6 kilohertz. It's kind of bouncing around between 15.6 and 15.8 and that's that's a locked picture so this is what it's supposed to look like not you know I've never seen a TV that had so many bodge wires all over the place and so many of them go right through the board, like there's holes drilled through the board. I can't say I've ever seen that before on a TV. But anyway, I'm going to try and clean this up a little bit. And we're going to try and diagnose this no high voltage horizontal. Uh, I'm assuming the vertical is working because I can hear it. But again, you never know. This, this might be a 
lost cause, hopeless case. It's so many wires, so much rat damage. Anyway, it's just wires everywhere. Like the whole, it's got circuit boards, but the whole filament chain is put together with wires. And the resistor that the SAMs called a 39 looks like a 47. I wonder if that's a replacement. Look at how that's just kind of. Look at how kludgy that is. Check out that circuit board. Is that awesome or what? Sure someone's saying, clean it you idiot, the dirt's conductive. Well, we'll find out about that. I don't think that's the problem. But we're going to do some good old diagnostics on this thing. This is a cathode current test adapter for a 6JS6 which is the color Zenith color TV horizontal output tube and this interrupts pin 2 and this is a this TV uses a 33GY7 and pin 2 on a 33GY7 is the plate of the damper so this will at least give us a crude idea of how much current is flowing through the horizontal output circuit. Instead of the good original 33GY7 that was in here, since we're going to be testing it and abusing this tube, this is a 38HE7 which will work. It's a lot, it's a much heavier duty or tube and this one is uh, kind of weak. So yeah, we're going to be doing our experimenting and testing with a weak 38HE7. And when the thing is working, we'll put the 33GY7 back in, which is the original tube. It actually was drawing so much current, it snapped the fuse. Look at this rat piss soaked fuse. Look at that. Okay, the fuse has been fixed the way any good professional technician would fix it. Well, I don't know what happened there. Not only did it blow the fuse, but it blew the filament apart in the, the uh, 38HE7. So I'm to a different 33GY7, and instead of the fuse, I got a light bulb connected. So let's see what happens. Okay, power. The light bulb got... Uh, So I wonder what happened there. I don't think there's anything different between the GY and the HE. So 100 milliamps is about our desired uh, operating current on one of these tubes. No more than 100. And the voltage is kind of low right now because of the light bulb. Let's see what happens if we bypass the light bulb. So yeah, it's um, it would cremate that tube in short order. Wow, I blew up my 38HE7, that sucks. Okay, there is a difference between the GY and the HE, and that is where the center tap on the filament is. The two filaments are in series, and the GY has a uh, center tap on a different pin than the HE, so it all depends on what they're doing. Uh, it might work in some situations but it might blow up in others and in this situation I destroyed uh, my weak test tube. I also see we have another chewed up wire right here. There's presumably part of the tube chart in the mouse nest. This might be a hopeless case. But I'm not giving up. I hear the vertical working. I wonder what that is. I wonder what gray is. Maybe the AGC. I think what I want to do is I want to hook the BNK 1077 up to this. 
and that would feed in on the plate which is five but unfortunately there's no easy way to get to five except maybe disconnect uh, from four so we'll disconnect this wire off the fly back here and then we can feed our 1077 right into this point and that'll basically tell us if the reason why there's no high voltage is this area over here including the yoke because the things that can stop the high voltage on this side are capacitors, the yoke, the flyback, something with the damper. Well there is nothing there. We know that's good. I don't think this capacitor is that bad. It's a little bit leaky. Um, so yeah, let's get the 1077 on this and we'll see if we get high voltage. If you're not familiar with this, this is a pretty neat piece of test gear that can be had relatively cheap for these old sets. And this does, this is basically like a television set that will substitute most of the signals. And we are going to use the horizontal plate drive. And this does the old school pattern. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's a neat piece of equipment. Uh, it'll substitute, we can do plate drive, we can do, I believe we could do grid drive. Yeah, we could do horizontal grid drive. So we can basically isolate where the problem is in the set. How about that, ultraviolet CRT? Okay, here we go, I got the plate drive into the flyback with the horizontal output disconnected. Okay, something smoking. What is it? I love it when things smoke and then stop smoking. Okay, no high voltage. What is it? Still no high voltage. What's up with this? Interesting. So it's not developing any high voltage. Uh, with everything behind the flyback isolated. So I'm driving the 1077 into right here. I got this line disconnected. So all I got is this coming in through the flyback to the 1077. So ignore everything back here, all of this behind this point. So this should still develop uh, this should still develop high voltage unless we got see this comes up so we got three connections to the yoke and we got a bunch of caps here we got a cap here, although that shouldn't kill it through a hundred K, we got this cap here. So let's inspect. We definitely have enough plate current uh, going into the 1077 and if I unplug the plate drive you can see it goes to zero. So 
what's going on here? Um, this is fairly simple. We either got a dead flyback, a dead yoke, or a dead capacitor. There's nothing else here. And I don't know what was smoking. I can't seem to find that. Here's that C, uh, C70, which is that boost filter. What's interesting about this is that uh, all the values on the parts are a little bit different than the schematic. Like that resistor was a 39 and it was a 47 in the set. This is supposed to be a 0.1 and it's a 0.068 in the set. Schematic's off a little bit. Capacitor tests great, right on the money. No leakage all the way up to 450, 0.068. It's right on. Okay, I've tested this cap, this cap, these two caps, and that's basically it. Um, I've got the yoke disconnected. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ohm out the yoke, and we'll see what we get there. We got three wires for the horizontal and two wires for the vertical. Between red and white we have 15 and a half ohms. Doesn't really give us a value here but it says horizontal is 30 ohms so I guess that would be between red and blue. Between red and blue we have 31, 31 ohms. Okay testing the yoke. The yoke is measuring 10 rings which is says it's good. Okay, this is measuring the flyback. Two rings, which is bad. So, do we have a bad flyback? That's very possible. This will also standalone drive the flyback and produce a small amount of high voltage, I don't know, a couple kilovolts. So, let's see. Um, AC short. Yeah, it appears that the flyback is shorted. Just looking at this, I find it really hard to believe that this is bad. There's no way that the mouse could have affected this. I mean, this is like showroom floor clean and fresh. I just don't, I, I, I don't know. There's one other possibility. I pulled the tube out to get the filament load off of that loop. The only other possibility is that somehow maybe this is shorted, maybe the mouse ate through this wire because it's a, it's a shielded wire and it's shorted. So let me, uh, let me disconnect that. That'll get the flyback completely isolated from the everything. I have this flyback completely isolated now and it's still saying short. Uh, so it's undoubtedly shorted. So the conclusion would be that the set died. The flyback failed in the set and it was put into um, storage and then the mouse got to it. So man it's a good thing I, I didn't spend a whole bunch of time tearing this apart and cleaning it up before I diagnosed it because if I did I'd be pretty upset. This, um, this flyback is going to be completely unobtainable. There's I wouldn't even know where to look for a uh, Western Auto Japanese made set portable flyback. You'd have an easier time finding the whole TV than you would the flyback well that's true with almost any of this stuff but yeah there's no way no way this is going to be located so measuring the secondary which is the big white coil there where the high voltage is developed that's most likely where the short would be a couple turns in their arc together or a bunch of turns and Sam's does give a spec for this and the spec they give uh, is 144 DC ohms and it's measuring 124. Now I usually wouldn't give that much stock because Sam's is well whatever but in this case you know 20 ohms low is suspicious. 
for the uh, primary there from pins three to four it measures 7.2 ohms and Sam specs out 7.4 from three to two it should be 5.7 it's measuring 5.2 from 2 to 1, it's measuring uh, 7.8. It's spec'd out at 8.2. So yeah, they're all a little bit low. You know, I always wanted to try something, but I wanted to try it on a color TV, and this might be a worthy candidate of trying it. I always wanted to try, uh, take a bad flyback, and remove this, and replace it with a tripler. That's assuming this is what's shorted. That would require basically removing the rest of everything off of here, taking the flyback out, and one problem we have is these wires. I uh, guess you're going to destroy it anyway. This loop right here, this loop produces the one volt for the filament for this tube. But you're going to get rid of that tube anyway if you go with a tripler. We're going to try this experiment. Why not, right? Nothing to lose here. Um, I'm going to disassemble this in place so I can get this wire off without cutting it. This is the filament loop. And then what we want to do is get this off of here. So we're going to destroy this thing, but at this point... Alright, even with it out here, uh, it's measuring AC short. So I think... Uh, I'm trying to get this apart and there's no way. I think what the trick is going to be is just to take and cut that thing off of there. Because um, I've, I've already broken this little wire right here. I can fix that, but it's just glued together. Here it is. I'm literally just chewing through it with the dikes. That looks a little bit suspicious like right there. Like maybe that's where it arced and burnt. Burnt. There you can see how it's built too. It's like a what a two millimeter stack of wire that's stacked like uh, I don't know a hundred or two hundred high. That way there's no real potential built up in any one area. Wow! Even with that winding gone, it's still showing a short. Well that's the end I can't go any further I'm done my idea was to take that off because usually this is what shorts the donut because that's where all the high voltage potential is that's where it arcs and burns so what I was going to do is just take that off leave this winding and then use a tripler to replace this like a color vi television tripler to replace that and just tie the tripler into the plate of the tube and if I had a say a five or six thousand volt uh, pulse on the plate of the tube I would end up with um, about what eighteen thousand volts and they say eleven point five to thirteen so I think a tripler would have worked just fine, at least to resurrect the set, but there ain't no resurrecting something that's got a shorted primary. Somewhere in there, a couple turns are shorted. And if you examine closely how this is wound, those layers are all, look at that, they're interlocked. I'd like to see somebody do this by hand. I wonder how they do that. That's almost got to be two overlapping... Uh, a machine with two overlapping uh, wires going on at the same time. Anyway, end of the line for a two-tone 12-inch Western Auto. It's been a good diagnosis, diagnostic video. This will be the first time I had to concede and say I couldn't fix a resurrection set from one of these abandoned mine sites. But yeah, dead flyback. Dead flyback, dead yoke, dead CRT kind of condemns the thing. 
unless it's something real popular, real mainstream where you can get it. This, you're not going to get this part. There's no way. In order to preserve the fecal integrity of the vintage television set with the bad flyback, we will now test the pressure filled vacuum bulb. Really? No cut off? Picture bulb is no good. Vacuum filled pressure bulb must have leaked all the pressure out. Maybe all the Freon leaked out of the pressure bulb. No cut off. Interesting. bad vacuum filled pressure bulb. Maybe I should have started there in the very beginning. Oh well. Pull the tubes and put her in the trash I guess. I decided I'm not going to give up. There's going to be a part two. Even if it's a complete and utter failure and it doesn't work, it's worth a try. Next week I'll go over how I came up with this and we'll give it a try and see if it works. A little substitution. It's worth a shot. I have nothing to lose, right? So there will be a part two next week and uh, hopefully we get this thing to light up. I'd like to see an image on this even if it's crappy. I'd just like to see it play again.